have portrayed our favorite web slinger on film, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, against each other. Spider-Man doesn't kill people. Round one, Origins. After an unfortunate incident involving a radioactive spider, Peter Parker took to wearing bright blue and red and fighting crime as Spider-Man. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Oh, and his uncle was murdered. Simple and elegant, no need to complicate things. He never doubted the man you'd grow into. How you were meant for great things. Tobey Maguire Spider-Man followed that structure almost to the letter, except that weird bit about organic web shooters. We have James Cameron to thank for that. Peter got bit, passed out, and then didn't need glasses anymore and went off to fight crime in his Spidey suit. Just a decade later, that simple and elegant story got a bit more complicated. Mary, have to go. Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker was abandoned at a young age by his parents, who may or may not have been super spies. The backstory of his parental units was shrouded in mystery, and ultimately, there was much more to Peter acquiring his powers than just a random spider bite. By the time the sequel rolled around, Columbia Pictures and Marvel Entertainment got a bit more confident about changing the Spider-Man origin story. It's just the wrist, it's just all the wrist, buddy. Now, you don't get points for changing the formula that much, so we're giving this round to Tobey Maguire. Are you afraid that I'm gonna turn into some kind of criminal? Round two, portrayal of Peter Parker. I'm Peter Parker. Who is Spider-Man, under that swanky mask of his? At his core, Peter Parker was conceived to represent the archetype of high school nerdiness. <gasps> Shy, bookish, and generally an all-round loser, Pete didn't have many friends and wasn't much of a jock either. I think you're pretty funny, don't you, freak? Yeah, it was just an accident. My fist break in your teeth, that's the accident. When Spider-Man first swung onto the big screen in 2002, Tobey Maguire had all of these qualities. He was ignored by the girls, was looked after by his aging aunt, and was a good nephew until that time he accidentally got his uncle murdered. Uncle Ben? In 2012, all the things that made you a geek a decade ago instantly made you hipster cool. What's your name? You don't know my name. Andrew Garfield put on his trendy glasses, managed an effortless bedhead quaff that almost looked like it wasn't planned, and skateboarded through the halls of his high school like some sort of super-powered Marty McFly. Peter. Parker. Peter Parker. <laughs> okay, good. He stood up for the weaker kids and even caught the attention of Gwen Stacy. While he is bullied somewhat, Garfield seemed a lot more like the cool older brother we always wanted, but that's not 100% faithful to the true essence of Peter Parker. If we're going by comic book standards, which we are, Tobey Maguire takes this round with a knockout. Number three, portrayal of Spider-Man. Who am I? I'm Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire suspended our disbelief when he knitted the best cosplay costume ever and took to the streets as Spider-Man. The only thing was, he was still Peter Parker under that mask. He fought villains and saved kitty cats, sure, but he was still a big geek. Don't even think about it. Yes, he had a few witty one-liners, but he spent most of his time with the mask off anyway, to the point where Peter Parker and Spider-Man were indiscernible from one another. With great power comes great responsibility. This is my gift, my curse. In 2012, we saw yet another teenager craft his own award-winning super suit, presumably from materials he found in his basement. Spandex, spandex, everything, spandex. But when Andrew Garfield put on his mask, he became a version of the web head closer to the one we all know and love. He took his pent-up angst out on the bad guys, cops, and giant lizard creatures and made it fun to be Spider-Man. Not to mention the fact that he always had a good zinger ready in his back pocket. Alright, so you don't want to talk? There you go. Because he made Spider-Man cool again, Andrew Garfield wins this round. <laughs> Number four, chemistry and relationships. No matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, when he wasn't watching her creepily from his backyard, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man was making awkward attempts at conversation with Mary Jane that never really panned out. Well, see ya. Although they do eventually hook up at the end of the second movie, Mary Jane had Peter firmly in the friend zone until she eventually put two and two together and discovered his way cooler, way sexier alter ego. Hi. Hi. He gets points for that upside down lip lock in the first film, but that might not be enough to win him this round. 
When Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker and Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy broke the ice, the chemistry was technically instantaneous. Are you following me? No, I'm not following, no, I'm not following you, no, I'm not. They flirted, joked, and generally gave each other the googly eyes. And before you knew it, they were dating. Now that is one smooth webhead. Shut up. Though it might not be the traditional wait a few years and see if she notices me approach that we're used to from old Petey, it managed to spice things up and made for a much more engaging story. The point here goes to Garfield for his smooth moves. Ah! Round five, character motivations. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. What does Spider-Man really want out of life? Tobey Maguire's wall crawler only wanted to help make a difference, to make sure that the streets were a safer place, and to put his powers to a good and noble use. You're not Superman, you know. <laughs> Isn't that wholesome? And it's definitely respectable. Don't we all want to make the world a better place in one way or another? This Spider-Man does just that, and he does it with style. He saved my life twice, and I've never even seen his face. Wow. Him. So, the same thing must be true for all iterations of the character, right? Not exactly. Man, I'm sorry. It seems like Andrew Garfield Spider-Man took his cues from Batman Begins and decided to avenge his dead uncle. How? You like beating on girls? You like beating on old men? By taking down every criminal who bore even the slightest resemblance to Uncle Ben's killer, even undercover cops. You seriously think I'm a cop? That is, of course, until a giant reptile creature started stealing the spotlight. And faster than you can say production notes, he dropped the revenge plotline and battled the giant lizard for some even sexier front page action. If social network trending and Twitter followers are your thing, then Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker was on the right track. No, I got a, I got a free track. I, want, I wanted to ask you a question. But Tobey Maguire had that selfless heroism thing that deep down we really want from our Spider-Man. Winner, Maguire. Are you alright? Look like you just got second place in the science fair. By a score of three to two, the winner is Toby McGuire. You're doing it. Andrew Garfield may be a sass-talking hipster with a lot of angst, but Toby is really the only one to have nailed it and become the Spider-Man we all know and love. What did you think of our friendly neighborhood verdict? I'm sorry. 